when you were a kid? Who didn't, right? You know, you dial a number and you say, is your refrigerator running? Well, you better catch it. But you don't do that anymore, do you? Of course not. Our contributor, Bill Geist, is here to introduce you to two masked men who actually make a living out of this stuff. What these two guys do, Connie, could be called sophomoric. Uh, freshmanic might be a better word, or even kindergarten-esque. But these are two guys who don't mind being called jerks. Hey, how's it going, boys? This is Johnny B. This is how I calm my nerves. About to escape some of the intense pressure of his fast-track career. Jay, Jay, come on, you gotta be the box. This is Johnny's partner, Kamal, ah, oh, who takes it in the ring as a hobby, but dishes it out as an entertainment industry professional. Hello. How do you say that, fruitcake? Taken together, Kamal and Johnny are known as the Jerky Boys. Shut up. They specialize in something you probably grew out of yeah. when you were 12 years old. Yes, yeah. I always wanted to sing and dance. Sing and dance, what do you do? Ah! They make prank <laughs> phone calls, like this one to an unsuspecting car dealer who advertised for a new salesman. Hello? Yeah, Paul. Speaking. I'm calling about the salesperson job. You want to sell cars through me or what? See, I had problems up there in Middletown. I got to get the hell out of that area. I grab some guy, he's, uh, you know, like he don't know if he wants to buy. I, I push his face right in the hood. I don't know, I don't run that kind of operation. Uh, you see, hey, we're off to a bad start, you know? How do you decide who you're gonna call and... You just pick up the paper, you go with the ads. As soon as, see, as, soon as you see an ad, you know which character was gonna work best with that ad. Be quiet. The Jerky Boys began recording their calls. And the homemade tapes were passed from friend to friend and eventually to radio stations. Hello. 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 Somehow, this spring, the Jerky Boys hit the big time, a recording contract. Now there's a warehouse near Philadelphia full of Jerky Boys CDs and cassettes targeted for your hometown. And they're climbing the record charts. It's the hottest tape now to the state in the store. Any major rock or rap label out there, this outsells. By a mile. And what's the whole thing about protecting your identities? What's that all about? Well, everyone had drawn up their ideas of the characters. And to see us kind of ruins that for everybody. The thing is, nobody believes you. So even if you take off your mask and claim to be the Jerky Boys, no one would believe you. Yeah, there's always a guy that'll say, it ain't them, it's some guy I know upstairs. Yeah, it's always somebody's yeah. brother. Yeah, and some you know. guy in Brooklyn. Hello? Eric, how are you? Listen, you're the piano tuning guy, right? Yeah. Yeah, the butt nut. My f***ing dog is inside the piano. He's snapping. He's all, uh, he's really in bad shape. You expect me to, to, uh, t to take your dog that's snapping and barking and biting to get him out of a piano? Well, I don't think. Uh, he's a little too tough for me there, Eric. Come on, I, I need your help here, fruitcake. Please. Uh, what kind of dog is this? He's a Rottweiler. Ladies and gentlemen, the real jerky boys. Yes! How you doing? <laughs> New York's Z100 is one of the most listened to stations in America. Gary Bryan and Ross Britton are the Z Morning Zoo. This is uh, it's pretty offensive, so uh, those who may be offended, please turn up your radio. Hello? Hello, Crystal. What's this? Uh, this is a friend. Listen, I was told to call you okay. for a modeling job. Crisal was at her desk at a New York modeling agency when she got her telephone call and became a jerky victim. It was just a weird call, but we get them all the time. And um, I just figured, you know, let me just stay on the line. It could be business. How tall are you? Oh, I'm approximately six foot one. Oh, wow. Excellent. Have you ever done runway? Uh, runway is just old hat to me, sweetheart. One of my friends had called me and told me, listen, you are on this tape. And I'm like, on a tape? A year later? What are you talking about? Maybe we can see it in person and we can discuss it. Okay? I'm honored, pretty much, because I am sure that they taped hundreds of people. And if they selected me, I mean, I guess I might be special. Bill, are you trying to find out who these guys are? Is that the whole gist of the show? Not anymore, we're afraid to ask. <laughs> Apparently, so was Kamal's father. He thought his son was a... Bum. Kamal's dad is not the kind of man you'd expect to find listening to a Jerky Boys cassette. When I have some free time, I meditate. I sit down, I talk to Austria. Direct. <laughs> I go for that. 
and that gave me more peace than anything else. Kamal chose the day of our visit to reveal his calling to his father for the first time. A... Where did you get a number? I went to dentist. I, I went for two decades. You gotta help me. You understand that? See, it was a joke. I called up, you know, that's part of the humor. It's nice. Yeah? Not bad. Imitation, it's okay. I'm hoping some thing, good thing could come out of this. <laughs> That's how I can... <laughs> nah. But Kamal's father can be proud that his son, little Kamal, has reached the pinnacle of success in the 90s. He has his own video. You tell him to see me. Super across the street. You got it, punk. Okay, I'll tell him. Do you know who they are? You do. Sworn to secrecy, Connie. I couldn't tell you even if I knew. The producer had to sign a statement saying he would not reveal their names if he found out who they were. So for now, we'll just have to call them the Lone Rangers of Rudeness. <laughs> Fine. <laughs> we'll be right back.